say hi everyone. <sighs> okay, I need to power up first. I would like everybody to meet the newest member of the Unplanned Parenthood YouTube channel. This is Alvin the Frog. Alice and I spent our last day off together because clearly we cannot get enough of one another. It's so annoying. Uh, and we had like the longest day ever. It was so hot that day and we were like down the street from a 7-Eleven So we were like, let's get slurpees and we were checking out I was totally fine with my paper straw that would have mel melted in my mouth But uh, there were these cute frog straws. They had all different kinds and Alice was like You're gonna regret it if you don't get one of these and at the time I was just like am I really paying three dollars for a freaking straw with a frog on it and now looking back It's like she knows me better than I know myself and I'm always drinking stuff on this channel. So I was like, you know what? let's Let's do it. So I've named him Alvin because um, we all have sort of random names in our little friends group like I call myself Sherman, Alice is Alvin, Jean is Jim, Erin is, I think we just call her, is it Erin with A-A-R-O-N? But uh, yeah, so I've named it Alvin the Frog because Alice bullied me into buying it, but no regrets for real, I really love that straw. But anyway, I'm back and we are here with another video. I honestly was going to shoot for a like 20, 30 minute video, which is so hard for me to do. And as I just kept thinking about it, I was like, okay, well, we're just gonna be extra as we usually are. So today, instead of just bringing out um, and showing you all of the biggest plants in my collection that you guys don't often see, I'm not talking about the glorious, I'm not talking about the majestic, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about any of those. I'm talking about plants that like legit, I never really ever show you guys because they're so large. These plants have become like fixtures in my apartment. I don't really care for them the way that I care for my other plants where I'm constantly taking photos of them. I'm like constantly fiddling with them and moving them around. Because they're so large, they kind of just have to stay where they are. I love all of these very much. They are mostly if not all, if all but one, all but one are common house care plants, common house care plants, common house plants, at least in my opinion, they're common plants, but I love them all the same. They are just, they're some of my favorites, honestly. Instead of, yeah, just kind of showing you them and just telling you how I care for them, I am actually going to care for them because of the fact that they are sort of permanent fixtures. I rarely ever take them down from where they are. I rarely give them the attention and the love that they deserve. So I'm just kind of looking at some of them right now and they definitely need some help. They need their leaves wiped down. They might need new poles. I think one of them is gonna get a new pole today. Uh, I've gotta fertilize and just make sure no one needs to be uh, repotted. So yeah, I think it's not gonna be a short video because I might as well just kill I don't, I don't like that analogy. I don't like that analogy. I might as well just get this all done in one go. So yeah, um, I think I've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven? That's it? I guess I do have seven plants to show you guys. So I think I'm gonna start from the smallest to the largest. I need to get my shower cleaned out because some, some of them need to be shoved in there and given a shower. So uh, yeah, I guess we're just gonna get started because this is not going to be an easy one to film. <laughs> oh, how come you can never just sit on the couch? Why does it always have to be on my lap? I can't film like this. I can't film like this. Oh my gosh. He literally, he owns me, everyone. This dog. 100% owns me. Oh, I love your stinky smell. Okay. So, the first one. Hey, ow, buddy. How do you like it if I pull your arm? What if I pull your arm? See what happens? See, you don't like it. Here, you pull my arm, you scratch my belly. Here, scratch my belly. See? Tasted his own medicine. All right, so 
The first one isn't huge, but it's not small either. Um, this is a rips out. You good? Are you good? You got it? You got the itchy? Okay. Oh, this plant smells like dust. I have shown this on my channel before. This is a Ripsala salicornioids, and it used to be much, 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 much bigger, but I separated half of the pot out for friends, family, and I sold some because it was just too large. It would have taken, I think it was in like a, like a, 12 inch pot or something it was massive it was growing i think in someone's yard then she brought it in but it was huge and as much as i loved it i was like it's too big so i just kind of potted it in one of these pots that came with my friend bought a plant from the nursery and i think it was like an outdoor plant with like flowers and it's like this perfect little thing like i don't know why they don't sell these more and there are drainage holes for all of you that are obsessed with drainage holes um, so this was the perfect vessel for it and I wanted to just have enough to fill it and then I got rid of the rest but um, this has just been such a joy to have since I've had it I never really had any oh it's sun stressing oh my goodness it's sun stressing it's getting all red cool um sorry ADHD uh, yeah this is one that I didn't really think I would ever struggle with a ton because I I feel fairly comfortable with Ripsalis plants and she did say this one was very hardy. You could tell how mature it is by sort of this callusing over the stems. It's like basically turned into like a trunk. Yeah, it really has not minded being cut. It didn't mind being repotted violently. It doesn't mind when I let it get super thirsty. And overall, this is just one of those plants that I often forget about because of how easy it is. I do have this just in my living room. It gets a good amount of direct east-facing light in the morning, um, but then other than that, it's really just, just diffused light from the apartment and what comes in from the south-facing window when the sun moves. But yeah, I really have not lost a ton on this and I haven't really even noticed anything dying off. Um, like every once in a while, I'll find like one or two of these little spindly things um, like on the floor, but it's not very often. It's like maybe once every three or four months, I'll see a little thing that's dropped. But it just doesn't die. <laughs> it just keeps growing. This was not trailing out of this pot as much as it is now. When I first got it into here, it was kind of just doing like what this guy is doing and this guy is doing. It was kind of just all hanging up at the top. And just over time, it's grown so much that it's just like hanging out. Like all of this right here is brand new. All of this down here is brand new. And I just can't, I can't complain. I love this so much. Um, I did gift some to my mom. I gave some to, uh, you know, the regulars, Alice, Jing, Aaron. They all are growing it really well. Obviously everyone's not growing it in a greenhouse. It's just one of those plants that you can put on a shelf and just set it and forget it, water it every few times. This plant is very good at showing you when it's thirsty. It gets um, kind of light in color and then it just, gets a little bit wrinkly and soft. Sorry, I'm gonna put it down because it's heavy and it really smells like dust. Maybe I'll just put it here. Otherwise, this thing is just, it's a joy. Uh, I feel like if you are able to get your hands on a Ripsella salicornioids, it's just, it's such a great plant because for one, it's easy to propagate. Literally just shove it in some water. Is that a mealybug? I've never had pests on this thing. What's that? Oh no, that's not a mealybug. Very easy to propagate. You can literally just cut it anywhere. You can cut it here at the stem and just stick it in water. You can just cut one of these things off and stick it in water. It's just one of those plants that you don't have to try that hard. Um, just skip all the fancy parfaits, skip doing tree fern fiber or perlite or anything. I mean, if that's your preference, then obviously go ahead. But literally all the times that I've propagated this, I just shoved it in water. Didn't even allow it to callus over. And yeah, every single propagation took, and now this plant has been spread amongst um, 
so many friends so yeah today i definitely want to give it a little bit of care i think what i'm gonna start by doing is aerating the soil a little bit um it doesn't feel very compacted or whatever at the top like it doesn't um seem like it's repelling water but i do want to get some slow release fertilizer in here just because it's constantly growing and i am not fertilizing this thing pretty much ever besides what's in my sprayer and I'm not watering it a whole lot either. So I think the addition of slow release will be good for this plant specifically because of how large it is and um, because of how much it's growing. So I will show you how I add slow release without repotting the entire plant. I don't think that it's a perfect solution, but it's good enough for me. I think after I do that, then I will get this thing into the shower and just kind of like, it's really dusty and I could smell how dusty it is. I just wanna clean off these little things and just get it looking nice and clean i'll give it a very very thorough watering and then we'll move on to um the next plant what i'm going to start by doing is i just have a chopstick here you can see i use it all the time for aerating my plants and i'm just going to start po poking some holes in the soil don't worry about root breakage or whatever these little um pokes are not going to kill your plant uh, and I just want to loosen up the top and just get some like little air pockets all around. Then what I'll do is take my Osmocote slow release fertilizer. This is just a 14, 14, 14 and it is good for three to four months after application. Oh my gosh, I'm kind of getting itchy now that I let this plant touch my neck. I'm just going to start taking handfuls and I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top. Someone has someone asked me like what my ratio is for the slow release fertilizer and to be fully honest with you guys I have no clue. I kind of just sprinkle till I feel like I've put enough to kind of cover whatever the surface area of the plant is and because I am still kind of fertilizing often with my little mix of fertilizers i'm not solely relying on this slow release to feed this plant so yeah just kind of want to evenly spread it out throughout the entire thing and then what i'll do once it's sprinkled in i'm going to just go in and kind of use my fingers and just sort of um disturb the top layer of soil so that some of those or as many as possible of those little slow release beads will fall into those little holes that I just poked with my chopstick and also just get kind of buried a little bit deeper than being on the top layer of the soil. I do see a lot of sort of like dead plant tissue or dead plant matter on the top. So I'll go ahead and pick those out too just cause I really like manicuring my plants. Alright, so now I'm going to bring this guy into the shower and we are going to give it a little rinse. Just um, keep in mind my bathroom is very dark so it's not going to be the greatest lighting in there. And I'm just going to use my iPhone to film it. So the next one that I'm going to show you guys while my Ripsalis is drying off is this Philodendron Mykins. I actually just gave this one a haircut not too long ago. Ugh. 
I chopped off probably a foot on some stems and then six inches on other ones. I try and give this one a haircut like at least once every three months or once every six months just depending how fast it's growing and i feel like that's the only reason why it's encouraged so much growth up here at the base like there's so much new growth coming in and i'm able to make a bushier pot without having to propagate and repot i was gonna do like a dedicated care video on this plant because i've had a good amount of people ask me how i grow the mykins but I just, I don't really think there's a whole lot to it, to be honest. Um, I would say my recommendation is just to keep it out of direct light, meaning don't put it like right in a bright window, like directly next to it, because this thing can burn. And I know some people really like the sun-stressed Mikan's look, but it's not really for me. To me, a sun-stressed Mikan's just kind of looks like it's dead. I just, the thing that I love about this plant are these really, really dark leaves. And if you can keep it like away from a window or you can just put it somewhere where it's getting like diffused light or indirect light, sorry, I'm like panting, this thing is heavy. It's all in pawn, so it's very, very heavy. There are a couple stems on here that are like really yellow. You can see that one. And I had this one in my bedroom for the longest time right by a south facing window, but I didn't have it facing the window. I had it facing opposite of the window so that it wouldn't get burned but this side was still catching rays from the south facing window and all of this was just like bright yellow, like bright red and so I chopped a lot of it off. I decided to move it out and now I just have it on this shelf right here um, and I think that it's just gonna grow in a lot darker. This thing is touching the ground right now. It's so effing long. What else is there to say about it? I really have loved growing this in passive hydro, no drainage vessel, in pond specifically. I got it in here a long time ago and you can tell because I've got a ton of the LECA mixed in, which I don't really do anymore. I wish that this had slow release fertilizer in it, but I'm kind of scared to repot it because it's doing so well. And I think many of us have the same experience with repotting trailing plants. They just look so ugly for the first few weeks and I just really love how it's growing. So I'm just not gonna touch it for a while, but yeah, no drainage, pond works wonders for this plant. Darker to more like indirect diffused light. Uh, regular fertilization at diluted strength, like a quarter strength regularly while it's growing and do not let this plant dry out. Um, it is a pretty thirsty plant. I just added water probably four days ago and it's already bone dry. There's not a drop of water left. Otherwise, yeah, this thing is just growing like a dream. I'll throw in a photo of what it first looks like when I brought it home. I think this, I don't have a photo of it when I first acquired it, but this would have been maybe like three months after I got it, but it started in a four, not a four, a five inch pot. There were about five stems in the plant and it was just barely trailing off the edge of that five inch pot. So she's come a long, 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 long way and I've repotted her so many times. She used to be in a Wally Grow planter. She used to grow in soil and she didn't really appreciate being in soil. I just felt like no matter how dense I got the soil, it would always dry out. But then I tried to do it in like a denser mix, like a way, way, way denser mix, and then it rotted. So that was the first time I really thought I was gonna lose this entire plant. And it was already kind of a good size and I was like freaked out like i legitimately freaked out and then um last year was it last year either last year or the beginning of this year this got thrips twice and it was surprisingly easy to get rid of it like permanently all i did was give it a regular shower once a week it's such a pain in the butt but i just i did what i had to do i gave it a regular shower once yeah once a week and then i would treat with the dr doom thrip spray every two showers so I wouldn't do it every time but I would do it like every two or three showers and it only um, kills the exposed thrip so it doesn't kill the larvae I think a really big part of me being able to get rid of the entire like colony within the tissue was using systemic and I was just using the Bonai systemic granules I didn't really know if it would work in passive hydro I kind of always assumed that the bonide granules were good for 
soil or they worked with soil but I mean I didn't have any problems with larvae after that it was just two treatments of the Dr. Doom maybe like six or seven showers and it was gone completely so I was able to save her but now I'm definitely more on the proactive side of things with this plant so I do try and give this a shower like every three weeks and I just find that it appreciates it because these velvety leaves actually attract a lot of dust and I'll notice that if I go like months without giving it a shower um, it just looks it just looks really dusty and it looks really sad so I try to give it regular showers and um, <sighs> this thing is so heavy you guys I'm panting so hard I'm just gonna go like this so yeah I like to give it regular showers and uh, just kind of spoil this one a little bit more than my other plants because I love it so much but ugh, she's she's a big girl let's see if I can ow, get the whole thing in the frame here's the bottom oh bottom's right here it's so big okay i'm gonna put this down now because it's it's too much it's too much i forgot that i actually did want to do some stuff to this plant which was just kind of manicured a little bit sorry i uh it's two ways to take it down again um i usually just get some of these dying leaves up at the base which is pretty normal but there's so much new growth coming in that i'm not worried and there goes my chopstick okay so not too many i think that is all i want to do so i'm going to try and do this without my chopstick because i have to redo my manicure anyway but i'm just going to kind of dig a little bit on one side and i can see some roots i have slow release fertilizer that i'm just going to kind of sprinkle into this little area and then i'm going to rebury it and I'll do the same over here. Sorry, this is like the worst freaking angle. And I honestly feel like I could even top up my pond in here. I'm gonna um, just add some more, but I'm happy with that amount. And now I'm just going to water. This is like the worst filming angle. I'm holding my iPhone with my left hand <laughs> and I'm on a ladder so I'm trying to not fall at the same time which I think that is priority. Now we are on to our next plant. I can't really tell who's the biggest out of these next three. I don't know, okay. They're all kind of the same size, but I'm just gonna go grab one of them. I think I'm gonna have to stay here because it's not gonna fit in my couch area. So let's move a little bit. Next on this list is this one that I really don't wanna carry, but I'm gonna just do it so you can see how big it is in comparison to my body. Ugh. This is my Monstera Deliciosa, which, wow, this soil, the pot is so light, I can tell it's super thirsty. But this one, this one's a complicated one. I used to believe that this was a different form of Monstera, and I still kind of do, just based on a few things. Um, I'm going to put it down now, but for one, some of these leaves are just so different than, like, any other monstera that i've seen before this one has been yellowing for probably six months but hasn't gone out but like the, the fenestrations are just they're insane like they're so t close to this midrib and the leaves feel really really thick uh not like any monstera that i've seen locally or just the ones that you see growing at the stores this one is my favorite leaf on the plant. And uh, yeah, like it's just, it's so stiff. I don't really know how else to 
explain it to you guys, but like the leaf feels just very thick. What is that? Oh, okay. And I just love all these like little pinhole fen fenestrations that it gives and it's just incredible. Like I fell deeply, deeply, deeply in love with this plant the moment I set my eyes on it. But the reason why I'm sort of doubting what plant this is is because of the newer leaves. Granted, I haven't given it the best conditions to be fully honest, like this moss pole situation is just absolutely pathetic. It's always lived really in sort of darker conditions and like the leaves just look super normal. They still are very thick, like they're thicker than normal and it grows so, so, so slowly and it's so hard to root these plants. Like they just, just the behavior of them and some of their characteristics, it's just made me really believe that it's not like a regular Deliciosa, but these look just like regular Monstera leaves to me. Very unimpressive, just kind of is what it is. But I think that a good part of this plant kind of giving me sort of meh leaves, oh, I don't like this angle, is the fact that we've got this situation going on here. Like this has needed a proper pole forever. Like the aerial root is right here and right here and my moss pole is here. But the problem is, is I have this one root growing into this pole. And as much as I really did not want to have to do this today, I'm gonna do it because I have these new poles from it's just my mouth. Hi. Um, I have these new poles from Lauren that I want to get onto this plant. And I just, I just really feel like it's time to kind of get this looking in a better situation. So I am going to work on this table because it's so large. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is kind of, I'm going to try and chop this pole off of this plant. I do think it's going to come crashing down though. You can see this kind of stilt situation I have going. I've actually got two of them to keep it up. So it's just gonna be, a, it's gonna be a challenge though because I don't have any more long bamboo stakes and a long bamboo stake would have been perfect. But I'm gonna see what I have around and we'll just try and make something work. Sorry guys, I didn't know I wasn't recording, but I'm just packing my moss pole and I said to not pack it too tightly because you still want your roots to be able to move around and um, breathe and not be too compacted. So that's pretty much as tight as I want to pack it. And I'm just gonna kind of shove these back here. Pole number one down. Now we have pole number two. This one's got a little bit of pond and perlite mixed into it, but I'm not too fussed. I'm not buying sphagnum moss anymore, but I do have a massive sphagnum moss wall to deconstruct in my large XO, so I'm going to be set for sphagnum moss for the rest of my life, and because I'm only using them for poles now, I really don't see the need for myself to buy any more than what I currently have, which is really exciting to not um, need to buy this stuff anymore. But yeah, I obviously don't want to put like the really, really crumbly moss in here. So I'm gonna try and find some chunks because this one's a little bit shredded. I really need to take that moss wall apart or else I won't be able to fill any of my poles. Okay, this one's gonna go on the bottom so I am gonna pack this one all the way to the top. This next part I think is not going to be very fun. I feel like my monster is gonna come crashing to the ground. Okay, we're gonna detach first one okay that didn't do anything good I'm gonna start chopping right here and just kind of try and detach it from this area and something went flying
so it didn't tip over, which is great. You can see here where I had a little bit of rot, which I carved out with my scraper, because yeah, this thing was like not happy. I have a nice little aerial root coming in right here that's gonna be a good place to start with my moss pole, but I do wanna get some of these sheaths cleaned up just because they're bothering me. Ow, I have a splinter in my pinky. Where are all these splinters coming from? Ow! Oh, geez, that's a bad one. It's still in there, but I can't find it, but I can feel it and it's very painful. All right, so I'm gonna get this one right here if possible. Like that. Sorry, cannot see anything. The reason I wanted to get the bamboo stake in here was because then it would be more sturdy in the pot because now I feel like it's gonna wobble around a bit. It could stabilize it with rocks, but I don't, still don't know if it would be enough. Okay, let's just see. Because I don't want to overcomplicate it if I don't have to. So like that would be good, right? Like that um oh i don't even have any ties this freaking splinter is bothering me i'm just going to use some velcro strips to keep this where i want it and i want to make sure that this aerial root is directing into one of the holes and not the plastic so like right here is good okay so i'm worried about it falling that way because i don't have a bamboo stake inside of it but I'm gonna just try and make it work. Here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna try and keep this pole from, prevent the pole from doing that. So I'm gonna take this stick that I was using to hold it up, I'm gonna stick it right here. And hopefully it doesn't puncture it. And I'm just gonna go like that. And that should stay, and now it's, straight and then I'm gonna stack well it's on top like this there we go I am still leaning leaning tower of Pisa you know what no whoa it's Christmas I'm not even gonna worry about an extension right now. And I think by the time I extend this pole, I do wanna repot it and get it into some fresh soil. This will do for now and I'm happy because I feel like it's way better than the situation that it had before. I just need to try and keep this up as much as possible. What I'm gonna do is um, top up this soil and also get some slow release fertilizer in it and then I'm going to bring it into the shower and give it a little bath. Where is my chopstick? Okay, I'm also seeing a little bit of an opportunity here. Um, this aerial root is pressed up so nicely against this pole. What I'm gonna do is make a lazy pole strap to enclose this entire thing so that it can hopefully encourage more roots to grow along here into the pole. Now that is one beautiful strap. This thing is still freaking leaning. All right, what do you want to do here, guy? I'm gonna need some reinforcements here. Oh, 
Well, that worked out well. All right, well, you know, she needs a little help, but I am super happy with this. I think that she's going to enjoy this moss pole a lot. Hopefully I can get some growth on her over the summer, but otherwise she is ready for her. Oh, my splinter. It's in here somewhere, guys. I just know it. Anyway, uh, I gotta take my Ripsalis out and then we will get this guy in. So, I don't know if it's because I haven't had coffee, but I keep forgetting to press record. So I think that I have probably missed a few parts, but I feel like you guys get the picture, but we're on to the next one now. Um, this one is my Ficus Elastica Burgundy. And I got this one from Vandula Farms not too long ago. Ugh. I think I can sit down and show this to you guys. I'm winded, I'm so out of shape. I do see a spider web on here, so I'm hoping that a spider doesn't just like crawl and attack me. But here she is. Um, she has just been such a champ since I brought her home. I historically have not had the best luck with rubber trees. Um, I don't know what it is, but they do well up to a certain point and then they just all kind of start drooping and then they never recover. But so far so good with this one. I have had this one longer than any other rubber tree that I've owned before. And hi Pudge. I'm kind of hoping this one doesn't have, I don't think this one has, oh I see spider mites. Oh yeah, we definitely got spider mites on this one. Okay, uh, not surprised. I'm so far from the camera. It's just hard to show you how big it is. Um, she's she's fairly large, and she's definitely outgrowing her. I'm gonna fall. <laughs> she's outgrowing the spot that she's in, but I'm just gonna keep her there and sort of let. Okay, don't look at my camel toe. Um, I'm gonna let her do the thing where she, if she hits the roof, I'm gonna let her just kind of find her way and just kind of scale the roof a little bit because otherwise I have nowhere else to put her. Um, it's grown a lot more in my care. It was definitely not this tall when I first brought it home and I did not expect it to grow as fast as it did. I've sort of always loved this plant. It was one of the first plants that I ever owned when I first got into the hobby like years and years and years ago. It was the rubber plant. I had a monstera. I had a fiddle leaf fig, a bird of paradise, you know, kind of all the normal guys that you see at like your Lowe's and Home Depot. Um, but this one of all of them, even more than a monstera, was like always my favorite. I'm not sure if it's because like my grandma had these growing in like our house when I was little or it, if it's just, I don't know, the leaves are just so beautiful. Like I really love this dark blue leaf and bluish greenish leaf. And I find that it just makes your space look so much, I don't know, more wild. Unlike Monstera's, like you don't need to put this on a pole. You don't really need to worry about it too much other than just making sure that you're feeding it and you're giving it water. And they kind of branch off and go wherever they want, but yeah, I really, really love this guy. We've got something funky. Okay, for sure we've got spider mites. I can see a ton of webbing and lots of those little guys. I'm not even surprised at all. I've never treated this one for spider mites because it's never had spider mites, but I think today is the day and also it's very, very, very dusty. For as many spider mites as I can see on this one, good thing it's isolated. It's all the way in the corner of my kitchen by itself, but as many spider mites as this has, it's not really showing any signs of stress really. Like it looks seemingly happy and healthy. 
So this one is probably going to be a deeper clean in the shower. I am probably going to be all wet because I want to get every single leaf. I want to use my um, Dr. Bronner's soap and then I'm also going to treat it with spider mite spray. And I think I'm also going to top up the soil on this one and add some slow release fertilizer. So let me do that right now. We have three more to go. This one is second, third to largest, and it is a uh, philodendron rojo congo. And obviously, I don't show this often on my channel because I'm not gonna sit on my couch and be like, hey, look at this new leaf up here. Um, ow. But uh, yeah, I mean, she she's thirsty. She's one thirsty girl. These leaves down at the bottom should not be hanging that low. Typically they hang a lot higher and I should be struggling a lot more than I am right now to carry it because I know that this soil is dry, dry, dry. I actually acquired this plant when it was maybe down to about right here. So like all of this grew in my care. And um, there was a second one in here, but it didn't make it. It just completely died and it's actually still in the pot. And I'm sort of wanting to repot this today into a smaller pot because my gut says that this pot is honestly way too big for this plant. I know the plant looks big, but this pot size was because I had two plants in here. And I don't know, I just feel like I just feel like it doesn't need this big old thing. This leaf is so floppy because it's so thirsty. Oh my gosh. So I do have it on this lazy pole because it was tilting a lot. And I kind of wanted to activate some of the roots on this stem. Do I want to repot it? Oh gosh, what time is it? Oh my gosh, it's four o'clock already. I'm gonna chop this leaf off because it never unfurled. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of super low humidity, but my guess is this film that keeps it closed just never uh, got loosened enough. Let's just unwrap it, Let's see what's going on. Oh my God, that's why. Ew. Thripsis. Oh no. 
see if there's more. I didn't even suspect that this one would have any thrips, to be honest. I was not expecting that. That's not a gift that you want to open, but it's nice that I have some footage now to show you of thrips larvae. Like, really good footage. Feast your eyes on that. So, wow. Okay, not what I was expecting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw this away before... Ow. Now the fun stuff of doing a more thorough inspection. I knew this plant was like dirty and dusty, but I did not suspect thrips. I really didn't. I didn't see any like thrips damage on the rest of these leaves. Ooh, I gotta get these cleaned off. They're so freaking dusty. Like look how dusty that leaf is. It's just behind my TV, so it's just really collecting back there. I don't see any thrips on any of the other leaves. That's wild. What about this emergent one? No thrips damage, no thrips. It was just in that little freaking taco. I mean, I guess that's a good thing, but also kind of terrifying. I would love to remove this old plant that was in here before. I'm gonna do it. I needed to do it a long time ago, but the pot, it, I think it was like really root bound in there. Sorry, you can't see anything, but I'm yanking this root ball out where the old plant used to be. This thing is just honestly, oh, there's dust everywhere. No! This is all gonna be in my contacts. Here's the old plant. Ta-da! Can you get that in the garbage? How is this plant alive still? Oh! Got more here. Mm -mm, don't like it, don't like it. It's in my throat, that's what she said. <coughs> wow, it was taking so much of this vessel. I'm telling you, this root system, I bet you, is tiny. Okay, you know what? I'm just, because I like to torture myself, I'm just gonna repot it. I just feel like, I don't like this. The good thing is, is it's super dry, which means it's gonna be really easy to take out of here. I hope, but I am gonna get this moss pulsage off. Well, that did absolutely nothing. <laughs> and that's because I never wet the pole. I'm honestly like just gonna lift it out of here and try and remove as much of this dirt from the root ball on the way up. This way. Ah. Vince is gonna be home soon and he's gonna be like, what in the heck happened in here? I'm gonna say, listen, it's not it's not what you think. It's not what it looks like. You guys are so lucky you're on the other side of the screen and you don't have to do this. Some of you are probably just sipping tea, cuddling with your dog in your clean apartment with your perfect hair and your perfect teeth. This is a Flipping disaster. But we're already here. We're gonna get it nice and clean, figure out who's in and who's out. So this is much, much alive, very happy. Um I think this is much alive, very happy. This one's sounding deader than dead. But I feel like I see some newer roots so that can stay. <coughs> oh my gosh. Sounds like a cracker. Damn it, I'm gonna have to mix new soil. What have I got myself into? Don't know what you guys can see, but considering I can't see jack crap either, that makes two of us. I think what I'm gonna do now is just get it directly into the shower without um, repotting it and just doing it bare root so that I can kind of get those cleaned up too. And then we will repot. I gotta get some new soil mixed and we will try and get this guy in a much better place because this is not, he deserves so much more than this. I did him so dirty. Oh my gosh, my feet are so dry from being in the shower. Don't look at him. Why am I using the world's smallest dustpan? 
Ow, ow, mom. Okay, so Pudge wants to tell you the new game plan, um, but I will speak for him. <laughs> so my husband's gonna be home in like 20 minutes, so I kind of want to get through the last two plants before I go back to the Rojo Congo. So, right behind him is the second to last one. This is my Dracaena Marginata, and I can't even tell you guys how much I enjoy having this plant in my collection. This one was actually a rescue from Nick. He had it on his balcony and it was literally on its last leg and it just looks so sad. So I was like, can I please take him home and bring him back to life? He was like, oh my gosh, I was about to throw this plant out. So you're doing me a favor. Um, when I acquired it, it only had this one, this one and the one up top. And in my care, it's pushed out this stem right here and then also this little stem here and i can see it starting to work on two new shoots right here and one behind it right there and i think there was one more even down here sometimes i like to just feel the little stems to see if i can feel any poking out but i think maybe it's just those two right now which is amazing because i feel like this plant knows exactly where to fill in because when it was just these three, it was like very bare down here where these two long stems are. And then this one came out first and was like, yeah, let me just fill that in. And then it pushed out right here. And now it's like already, <laughs> it's looking like this nice big bushy thing. And so you can see right here, we've got a little bit of a gap, which I don't mind because I really like seeing these long trunks. But yeah, now it's gonna fill in nicely right here and we'll have two shoots coming out here. And honestly, if I'm predicting this plant right, I think the next ones are gonna come out somewhere right here along this stem and uh, or the, that trunk. And I'll have like a nice big bushy thing. But whoa, I stepped on a dog. These plants usually when they're sold in the stores, they braid the trunks. And I am here to tell you to stop braiding the trunks of these plants because they're so beautiful when you just let them do whatever they want. They're like Dr. Seuss trees. Yeah, it just kind of brings a little bit of life to this little corner. I've moved it around so much. I just can't really find the perfect spot for it, but um, it's been here for a while. I think I eventually want to move it back to my bedroom because I just really, really like it in there. And um, this one likes light and I've got a big south facing window in there. Otherwise, it's doing okay. It kind of suffered a little bit after I repotted it and it was dropping a lot of leaves. You can see all the leaves down here. It was like, oh my gosh, it was dropping like one leaf per day. Like it would do this. I'm pretty sure there's like another one to pluck off somewhere. But it seems like it's kind of bouncing back now and the leaves are like perky again because before it looked all like this or it's just like hanging down low and just had no pep in its step. So I'm really happy to see this one looking like really, really perky again. Even this one up here has perked up a lot. 
So yeah, a little bit of a maybe transplant shock, but I think it's gonna be just fine. So this is, again, another one of my big plants. I'm, I think that you guys probably see it a little bit in kind of backgrounds of videos and I've featured it in like my first house plant tour that I ever, it was my first video on YouTube ever. And if you go to that video, you wouldn't see all of the new growth. Um, it looked much smaller, but definitely a fave. Love it so much. If you guys have a chance to get one and like grow it out and just let it become a big tree, seriously, like this plant is just incredible. Okay, last but not least, we're in my bedroom. We're doing a little bit of um, redecorating in here. I'm gonna pull these shelves down and I'm gonna uh, paint something really big for this area here. But um, yeah, this is my biggest plant in my collection. This is a Euphorbia trigona and it is literally a tree. I don't think that I can get it in the whole frame. I don't want you to see my bedroom. It's so messy. And I like to keep our bedroom private. I don't really like to show in here because this is just kind of our space that's not on YouTube. And yeah, so this is as much as I can show you. But the woman that I acquired it from said she grew it from a really, really tiny plant and it just took off over the last few decades and she did say this one was about 55 years old I think maybe older the little top broke up there I thought it was gonna completely die off but it didn't um, during transport it actually broke off a lot of these uh, little arms when the guy transported it over here but I was so thankful he was willing to take it to me because these are very 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 spiky and um, it's actually poisonous the sap inside and if it gets on your skin yeah you get really itchy I've experienced that before and it's not fun so I really don't move this plant around a lot and I just kind of keep it where it is I thought that it would do poorly right here because it's not super close to the window but it seems to be doing okay. My goal is that eventually we will own a home, like a house, a detached house, and I'll have the perfect spot for this, either in a sunroom or somewhere right next to a window. But here I just don't really have the perfect spot for it. So it's in here for now, but it's so beautiful. I almost sold it because I felt like it wasn't gonna do well in my care because I wasn't giving it um, a lot of sunlight, but Seems to be okay. I watered it not too long ago because these were looking a little, a little sad and soft, but I think it's gonna perk up. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is the Euphorbia. While the Rojo Congo is drying off in there, I'm going to mix this new batch of soil. This is just the Fox Farms Happy Frog soil mix, and there are some like large chunks kind of stuck together like this so I kind of just want to get them all split up and then I'm going to add my amendments and get it all nice and juicy and delicious for this for this plant. I am hoping that it doesn't kind of get stressed out too much by what I just did to it but I am kind of excited to see how it does just being in new soil because that old soil was just like so I don't know like it didn't look very nutritious it was very very dry and yeah, I do plan on getting lots of slow release in here because I don't fertilize that one a ton. And I think that plus it not getting a lot of light is probably why the leaves are getting so tiny. So that's just, that plant has just needed some care for a while. And as tired as I am, and as much as I did not want to get myself into this situation today, I'll definitely thank myself later once it's done. So I'm gonna be adding some biochar to it. And I've, oh, my AC, it's like blowing all of it away. Gosh. Um, gonna have biochar all over the house. So I've been using this in replacement of the horticultural charcoal chunks. Okay. Yeah, I just, this was recommended to me by someone that grows amazing, amazing plants and is kind of my mentor, um, Amanda. I talk about her a lot. She recommended biochar to me and I didn't know that 
Lauren carried it in the shop, so as soon as I saw it, I just took the opportunity to grab a couple bags. And um, so far, my plants that have been repotted using that in soil are doing really well. And I'm not getting a lot of those, like, you know those little moldy bits that form in the soil? They kind of look like eggs. I forgot the name of it, but I don't really get those anymore. Whereas before, they used to, like, pop up pretty soon after I repot. And you guys will notice that I've got these big old chunks of charcoal and I just like to keep those in my my uh, big soil bin. I don't actually put it in any of the plants. I'm gonna add some slow release fertilizer. This is all I have left. I've been using this stuff like crazy. I'm gonna have to grab some more from Lauren when I go back to the shop. I've got this box of sifted amendments from Old Soil and I'm just going to be adding some into here. It's basically just uh, perlite, leca, some chopped up sphagnum moss, um, husk, and some more charcoal. <laughs> just to kind of make it a little bit more chunky. Feeling good about the chunkiness level of this um, aeroid mix. I don't make my mix as chunky as I used to, but I do have a good amount of amendments in here. And um, it's definitely not going to dry out as fast as my other mix. So I guess the only thing now to do is uh, dry off my Congo and then bring it out here and we're gonna get it nice and settled in his new pants. Okay, so this is the pot I'm opting for. It's either this one or one that's a lot smaller and I would rather go bigger than smaller. Um, I know that I wanted to go smaller, that's, that's why I got it out of the other pot, but I'm just gonna fill it to like here. I'm not gonna fill this whole thing and as the lower leaves shed and it continues to grow, I'll keep filling and filling, but at least it'll be able to live here for a good amount of time. And it's definitely prettier than the other one. It's so funny, I feel weird filming headless now. But you know, sometimes the angle calls for no head. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be here all day. I don't have time for this. I am jumping in the sh I was gonna film another video after this, but there is no way. I am jumping straight into the shower. Oh my gosh, it's all over.
that was exhausting. I am so dirty. There's literally dirt all over my body. There's dirt all over my jeans. I'm gonna have to clean this couch. You guys can see the destruction behind me. But um, as painful as that was, honestly, that was not very fun for me. I'm glad that I got it done. I'm glad that I got it out of the way, especially since it's summer now. I feel like my Rojo Congo should be a lot bigger than it is now and I think a lot of it is due to the fact I've just neglected it so much. Pudge is so cute. So anyway, um, I look like I look like a, a hot piece of poo. So anyway, I'm gonna try and get cleaned up before Vince gets home. I think I'm just gonna pop a pizza into the oven and call it dinner and get myself cleaned up. I feel itchy. I feel like I have like soil like in my scalp. It's disgusting. Thank you guys for hanging out with me for another upload. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps me and Pudge a lot on YouTube. We appreciate you guys for being here. Thank you to all of the old and the new subscribers and we will see ya in the next one.